the Finance and Facilities Committee meeting for the School District of Waukesha. It's April 10th, uh, 2023. Have we been properly posted, Jess? Yes, we have. Okay, thank you. And moving on to a time for the public to address the committee. Did we receive any anyone asking to address us? No, we did not. Okay, thank you. We'll move right into our action items then. I would be looking for a motion to approve the minutes for the March 6, 2023 uh, FNF meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Robertson. Any discussion, corrections? Okay, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, all opposed? Passes 5-0, Jess. Moving on to our second uh, action item, vouchers. Sherry, what questions did you have uh, um, called in? Didn't actually have any questions this month, but I have follow-up from last month. Okay. And I handed those documents out. The first is a breakdown of the two-year history of AVID um, by expense object. So you've got that document in front of you. Um, the total expenditures in 21-22 were 123867 um, And so far through today, they're 177191 um, I've been asked the question for follow-up as how many students are being served by AVID. So I will get that to Darren for a third Friday, I mean for a Friday update instead of waiting till next month. I will get that out right away. Um, any questions on the breakdowns? Any clarification needed on what the different categories mean? And this is for the entire district? Correct. Okay. And we have basically AVID at every level now. I would have to follow up. Every level, maybe not every school yet, but every level. Is it's it not every school. It's close to it. Majority. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were just at the end. Still had some left, or if we if we made it for all of them. Okay. Mark that down. Okay. If there's no questions. We'll go on to the next one, and that was a question on open enrollment history. Now, there's different ways to look at open enrollment history. When you're looking at the numbers of students, there's actually three different counts out there. One is the count of how many actual students, no matter how, um, how long the students been with the district, if, they, if, it's been, if the students been there all year or if they started and then they dropped. Um, then the other number is the number of students, but then um, reduced for 4K by the percentage to 60%. And then there's FTEs, which is what I've chosen to report on. FTEs to me is the most ac um, accurate amount because it shows the number of students based on the time they actually spent in our district. So it's... Um, you look at the, all of the data and you look at the students, um, how long they were here, and not everybody's here for a full year. So there's three charts. The first chart is total open enrollment FTE history. Um, and the blue line is our OE ins, the orange line is our OE outs, and then the gray is the net difference between the two. So you can see from an FTE perspective, we spiked during the pandemic and we're on our way down. The thing is that the ins are going down faster than the outs, and so our net is dropping. Um, it's still better than it was prior to the pandemic, but it shows the picture that it's dropping. Did I not give you? Oh. No. Sorry. Yes, Carrie. Um, thank you. Um, Thank you, Sherry. These are great slides. I, I really appreciate graphical data. Uh, the one piece that I think we were trying to carve out in this also was eAchieve. So in taking a look at the regular counts, right, yep. this makes, so the drop, I know that we saw the increase in eAchieve due to the pandemic. Now we're seeing for the first time actually in several years, eAchieve is actually now a declining trend that we've seen, which is included in our regular pieces. Um, and I, I think it's important that we separate eAchieve with regular so that we can see the full picture of, of really the impact of what declining enrollment is broken out by. 
Absolutely, and that was one of the other follow-up items is that we talked about several things from eAchieve, so I'm I've connected with Jason Smith to have eAchieve come in and actually do a presentation. We're looking at May or June for that to happen to talk about their open enrollment numbers and then how they correspond to the rest of the district. Um, where I get my data from, it's not real easy for me to parse out by FTE. The the actual schools, um, so eAchieve has other numbers and we'll take a look at that and compare that to the full district enrollment. I think they go mainly on the first number I spoke of, the actual number of students, irregardless of how long they were in the district, but I would like to confirm that with Jason. Um, and then they'll also be coming to talk about the um, um, Advertising, thank marketing. you. Marketing, marketing was the word I was looking for. So we've got that on the horizon to come. So, but I wanted to start with at least um, the open enrollment as a whole picture. The other part where you can look at open enrollment is by dollars in and out, but because that open enrollment transfer rate changes every year, to me it's not as accurate a picture because you don't know how much of that change is due to the open enrollment rate changing versus the number of students changing, which is why I chose to report like this. Yeah. I did actually, I do have a chart that has the dollar amounts, which I thought I had printed, but I don't. So I'll give that to Darren to share, and you'll see then the dollar amounts that correspond with each of these uh, graph items. Perfect. I appreciate all the hard work. I know this is a lot to do. Um, in speaking of marketing, if they are presenting, I'm going to add one more request in on there. Um, I don't know if the rest of us have paid attention to both uh, commercial radio versus televised ads, but across the state, we are seeing a large amount of advertising for other districts or other areas that are doing eAchieve, um, and we see nothing for the school district of Waukesha. And so one of the things when we talk about we're doing a large marketing spend, most of our budget is for eAchieve. It would be nice to, to understand how that breaks down, especially now when we're starting to see competition really start to target our area. Yeah, Dr. Piasek. I was just going to respond to that. I hear eAchieve commercials often, mm -hmm. so and I actually am kind of impressed by that. I, I wonder sometimes how many... Radio or TV? Um, mostly radio. Um, but how many times in the past I might have heard them and not really, mm -hmm. you know, comprehended them. But yeah. um, I, I've actually been a little bit surprised lately at how much I have been hearing about eAchieve specifically. So. so the strategy has changed over the years. So um, the folks at eAchieve have done several analysis throughout the years. Where do they get the biggest bang for the buck? And there have been times where TV's been quite impactful. And that has kind of gone by the wayside. Um, but it, you know, I, the point being is, is we, um, we do take a look at that. It's not just doing the same thing year to year. And that's been partially due to having it come before this committee and having you know, Jason and his team, um, or Rick in the past when Rick Nettesheim was the principal, they would let us know what they were doing and we'd ask them whatever questions we had, and um, we even sat down, you know, the committee, Pat and I sat down one time to really take a close look at, uh, like, the digital. Lead generation. Yeah, lead generation. How is that working? And so, I mean, uh, the people at, at eAchieve have always been open to, you know, figuring out what's the best and sharing the data and, uh, you know, working with the board mainly this committee in particular, to really figure out what's what's the best. So we should just continue to carry that forth, and I, I do like some of the breakdowns that you're, you're asking for, Carrie. And this year might be a little different as well, because buying TV time during an election cycle Ooh, is yeah. a completely different. So yep. it might be, I don't know, it'd be a question to ask them. I don't know the answer, but I know the cost of doing that balloon, especially spring elections, right? So. And part of the questions for last month also asked about the um, the areas we are targeting and what students we have in those areas. So that is on the list of things that we've already asked for. Um, and I've seen them on buses, but I can't remember if it's this year or prior years, but I've seen the achieve bus ads. So I thought that was interesting. Okay. And that is all I have for her. And just, just real quick, when you look at the, f the first handout, the open enrollment FTE history 2019-2020, 
total FTEs. One of the things that I just gleaned from it, if you look at the gray bar, the net FTE, you know, we're at about well 349 for for this past year or this this year. Um, and I go back to 2019, 2020, and um, you know, we're at 290. So we're still ahead of pre-pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be great to be at the pandemic numbers, <laughs> but we still at least have, uh, I think, a pretty good, st st still better than being below the, 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 the net difference um, from pre-COVID, pre so. Hey, Sherry, did you have other questions? That um, that's all follow I up have. on? Okay. I'd be looking for a motion to approve the vouchers. So moved. Second. Second by Dr. Piasek. Any questions or discussion on those vouchers? Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes 5 0, Jess. Thank you. We have one more action item. Um, we're looking at uh, the approval of the West High High School entrance easements. Um, Darren, do you want to take us through, uh, bring us up to speed on that project? So I know we've talked on this before, um, but you have made some headway, it looks like. Yeah, we've, uh, Karen Braun's also on, um, signed in today to help us maybe answer any questions that may come up related to this. Um, we, we brought this to oh, an um, <laughs> agenda item. I think it was January or February and just kind of gave you the draft documents and let you the committee know that this topic was out there um, but the county is um, proceeding with a reconstruction of the main entrance off of Salesville Road um, for West High School um, there's a diagram um, in your notes I'll bring it up so people can see it um, it shows the expansion and the um, the addition of a turn. Yeah, that last, that last attachments. Yes, the best one. that's the summary. Yeah, that's the, the other two one. attachments are specific <laughs> to the easements. Um, there's two easements being asked to be approved. One's a temporary, one's a permanent easement. Um, so, Karen, I'll highlight the changes, and if I miss something, just feel free to chime in. Um, a general widening, all the lights that have been out there for 20 years yeah. now-ish, uh, um, were temporary in nature, so this is coming back and making it a, a, a more permanent structure. Um, they are adding a turn lane onto Salesville Road as you exit um, out of West High School. Um, and I think we are adding um, turn lanes coming on the Salesville Road uh, approaches to the intersection. Um, and this work is all scheduled for um, this summer. We've been in contact and in communication um, with the leadership out at West High School about you know, what days do we have to avoid, wait after until graduation's done, but as you know, high schools are running all the, all 12 months out of the year. So um, I think we have everything in the role. Legal counsel has reviewed the easement documents um, and are good with um, what is presented. And Karen, I don't know if you want to add any anything else to the conversation that might be helpful. Can you hold there? You did a wonderful job explaining it. Um, temporary signal to Waukesha County are about 15 to 20 years, which is a little embarrassing. We have ordered and we're putting in what are called monitors, which are much larger. The signal heads go over the lanes. The safety will be improved at this location. We're shifting the turn lanes for better visibility, and it should result in better traffic flow and a far safer intersection. The right turn lane that we're proposing along the ball field is also to address the traffic at this location for people exiting the high school to get them out of the intersection and on the highway next to Little Easter. So is, is that exit a is that a yield sign there or is it still light controlled? Um, it would still be light controlled, but you can turn red. You can turn right on red. Okay. Other questions of the easements or the, the plans to improve this intersection? Maybe just a comment. Yes. I I did go out and just kind of walk off the the distance that's being consumed because obviously with the ball diamond there, and I know certainly on weekends when there aren't scheduled high school events, I see kids with their 
parents, you know, kind of throwing the ball around and stuff. And so it's a it's a good chunk of land, but when you look at where the the backstop is placed and where, you know, potentially fans and other things would happen. It's, my initial concern was just, are we looking at this the right way and, you know, where our car is going to be relative to what's happening here. But um, I, frankly, I think going in and out of that parking lot quite often, I think this will help. Hmm. Um, I would expect maybe some teenagers with scraped up hubcaps as a result of the new <laughs> curb island <laughs> that's put in there. But, um, that, you know. Then the flowers. And on well, the plows, right. yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of traffic and safety and, you know, anything with respect to the land that's being consumed there, I don't really see any problem with it. I mean, I see advantages. And, and we asked that specific question. Actually, we talked about it months ago, and then I think I emailed Karen maybe a few weeks ago about how close are we getting to that field um, and what's the drainage impact on that field. and. And everything seems to check out in, in the eyes of West leadership and um, the Billings of Grounds crew in terms of drainage away from the field. So, um, yeah, I think overall it's going to be a, a significant improvement. All right, any other questions or comments or motions to be made? Ms. Carey. I motion to approve the West High School entrance easements as proposed. Is there a second to that? Second. Second by Mr. McCaffrey. Further discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes 5 0. Jess? Thank you for uh, being here tonight, uh, Carrie, and uh, Carrie, right? Or is Karen. Karen, I'm sorry. Karen? Thank you for taking the time to look at this and working with us. We look forward to working with the high school this summer. We will still be intersections. All right, thanks, Karen. Have a good night. The years are old. <laughs> That's right. That is right. You're not biased, but you know. <laughs> Moving on to our discussion items, we do have four of those tonight. And the first one is our monthly budget report. Sherry, what uh, do you have for us? <laughs> Only good news, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And actually, there's the budget um, report itself is pretty uh, insignificant as far as there's no big activity to report. Uh, nothing I really needed to, I felt the need to call out. Um, interest is still favorable. I know last month we said we were going to bring in a budget amendment this month, but we decided to look at the whole picture next month uh, and bring one budget um, amendment versus just bringing one at a time. So we're going to take a good look at the whole budget picture now, and then next month we'll have something. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but what I wanted to share with you, I thought I'd take a minute rather than go through all the percentages was spent in each department is um, given the recent banking things in California with some bank failures. Well, we reached out to our bank to say, can you share a, a one pager with us that tells us um, exactly how is our money safe in your bank at Waukesha State Bank? We, we have three financial institutions that we use. We use Waukesha State Bank. We use the local government investment pool, which is LGIP, and then Wisconsin Investment Series Cooperative, also known as WISC. And the latter of the two are um, more investment uh, funds related um, versus an actual bank. Um, so the bank, because we do keep a large um, amount of our money in the bank, they put together this nice little diagram that uh, shares with us how they're protecting our money. And so like with everybody out there, there's the FDIC insurance of $250,000. That covers, there's, um, even though you have several bank accounts in a bank, it's per depositor, not per bank account. So um, we have several bank accounts there, but we're considered one depositor. Um, you can get 250000 on interest-bearing accounts and then another 250000 on non-interest-bearing accounts. We only have one non-interest-bearing account because it's kind of a, a flow-through account where money gets moved back and forth all day long between the different accounts. And that only, the max that ever has in it is $300,000. So 
that one's fairly secured by that. But then in addition to that, um, uh, Waukesha State Bank collateralizes our deposits. So they've, um, and th they have the definitions of what all that means up above, but basically should something fail, our deposits are um, safe by this collateralized amount that we would then get the value of that. So um, those are an investment. So if it, it, because it's an investment, it might not be dollar for dollar, but it depends on the, the market, but it should be very close at any point in time. And then anything we get over $30 million goes into a repurchase account with um, US government securities. And it's the same thing that that money is secured for us that if something would happen with the bank, that money would then come to the school district to cover any funds that were lost by the bank. So I mainly wanted to bring this to your attention just to say our, our investments are safe and secure and um, open that up for any questions that people might have. Yes, Carrie. Thanks, Sherry. I think you actually read my mind. Um, and for a lot of us that don't follow banking, right, and what we saw happen with Silicon Valley Bank, uh, it again reminds us that banking industry is one that is still at a point that we have to watch. They banks can make poor choices and if we're not managing and watching that. And so understanding all the different components that in the event something should ever happen to Waukesha State Bank, we are far more than covered with our, our cash assets, which is great to hear. I appreciate that uh, you following up on this. I think that was great insight. Thank you. Any other thoughts or questions on this? How long have we had a relationship with Waukesha State Bank? Uh, a long time, but our last official um, agreement that we've built extensions on was um, 2012. Okay. They're very good to us. Since, since at least 97. Yeah, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Long time. And they've served us well. Um, mm -hmm. They're a wonderful partner. They don't charge us fees for any of our banking items at all. True community bank. I mean, you see, you know, they're, they're, uh, they've been there for businesses. They've been there for nonprofits. They've been there for schools. Um, really, a true community bank. At you know, the 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 term itself, community bank, it says it all. But we take we've taken, I think, Waukesha State Bank for granted. Those who, uh, those of us who've lived here, like our whole lives. So fantastic that we still have a great relationship with them and yeah. they're serving us at this capacity so they're, they're great um, then let's just talk about the tax collections real quick um, I shared the document through March we have collected 74.9 percent of our taxes compared to 74.8 in March so we're right in there it's pretty cyclical and pretty um, with the the exception of the blip of the pandemic, that one year the taxes were off a little bit in collection, but um, we're right on target where we expect to be with that. Um, health insurance, and Darren's gonna talk a little bit more about health insurance after this, but we actually spent down a little bit of our surplus last month, so, but it's mainly because there were five weeks in the month, and so we had an extra month of claim, an extra week of claim draws, so it looks like it was a drop of 162,000, but it was really just because there was an extra month of claims and counted Week. in that month. But otherwise, we're holding our own. We have um, our current extra surplus is the $6.7 million. Um, we still have that. We have our fund balance reserve of the $5.3 million. And then the day-to-day -day operations uh, are at $1.2 million. So there's our self-insurance is still very, very healthy. Um, Dental insurance is where we've spent down only like $9,000 for the year so far, which is good. It's a good position to be in with dental because mm -hmm. we have the backup funds should we have some bad claims experience with it. The thing different about dental is that we know our exposure. It's very different than claims. Each person has a maximum amount of spend that they get on the dental. So even if they have an unfortunate dental situation, um, we're only liable for a specified amount per person, per family, per orthodontics. Per so um, what we have in reserves is a, a very good amount to keep us covered on that. Um, other than that, unless you want me to go into the 
detail of the monthly budget report, which seriously, there's not much to report on this month that's anything out of our ordinary. Mm -hmm. Any questions on anything else? All right, excellent, thank you, appreciate that. All right, moving on to our tax incremental financing for TID 17. We're looking at a potential amendment coming up here. Darren, you wanna take yeah, this one? Yeah, um, two weeks ago now, um, I, I attended the TIF meeting um, over at the uh, City Hall and next week um, they're asking for a vote on this amendment um, of TIF 17, which is a TIF that includes actually this building. Um, but the, the amendment itself is actually adding the public library and then crossing the street to get to the old associated bank and their related parking space for the construction of a, a hotel um, in downtown Waukesha. So um, since it's an existing um, TIF, you know, it has to go through the Joint Review Board again to ask for an amendment of the plan. Um, as with every conversation um, with the TIF, when it comes to amendment and you have an existing um, TIF out there, the issue of defeasance comes up and, and our finances are different than the other municipalities involved. They're, they're looking for property valuation growth. We're funded by the number of kids in our schools. So um, there's just a little different lens that the two of us um, uh, are asked to look through. So um, based on that, I did ask um, for what the defeasance would be um, without the amendment versus the defeasance with the amendment. And the dollars, I mean, to the average person, this sounds like a lot of money, but in, in the larger scheme of thing, I don't know if it's um, worth noting, but I think I should know as I seek out your feedback on, uh, on my vote uh, next week. So if no amendment is approved, the total defeasance that would be shared by all the governmental bodies is $61,410. I want to say we're around 40% of that number would actually be received by us. And I, I'll put the caveat, these are projections. Um, the numbers will change, but I, I think my guess is that it's a pretty solid projection. With the amendment, the total defeasance is $14,838. $838 and it would be happen a year later. So again, a lot of money, <coughs> most conversations that we have, but not a lot of money in the larger picture of things. So um, other than that, I, I think, you know, the merits of, of the project, I, I don't think it's a bad project, but I'm just interested in hearing what FNF's thoughts are on it before I, I cast my vote. And the whole plan document is available. Mr. McCaffrey? So we have to, they have to include the library because it's got to be contiguous, right? In a bridge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then how much, and you might not know this, but how much of the property is still on the tax rolls in 17? Because mm -hmm. this building's off when we close, right? The building across the street's off because Carol doesn't pay property taxes. That's a good question. And then Les Paul's in it, and the public library's in it, mm -hmm. and Cutler Park's in it. So I was just wondering how much, I mean, not much, because we're looking at 24 grand, right? Is our defeasance. I, I wouldn't think there's a lot left. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's why it's so small. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, why. So small. it just yeah. kept going, you know. I thought maybe that was the city. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, obviously it's, it's not gener it's not a exactly. and the generator. Oh, the dorms were originally in it, right? When mm -hmm. they were, they yeah, I'm trying to find a rubber. I was I'm trying to find the map and be able to bring it up, but that's pretty blown up. There we go. Church is probably in it. St. Luke's is probably in it. Uh, actually, the public library in St. Luke's are not in it. They will be, though, I mean, with the amendment. Yes. Right? yes. I'm talking. There won't be hardly anything. I'm talking with the amendment. There won't be hardly any. There's a lot of residential. Taxpayer um, role. The old Y was in it at one point, I'm assuming. YW. Yeah, YW. Can you pull it down a little bit, Darren, to show the, the, the blue outlined area? Sorry. There we go. So the amendment is the outlined area. It's right there. I jumped that high. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so. So one of the things um, that we've looked for in the past is the amount of defeasance, and why why is that important? Well, we have this thing called the revenue cap, and um, this just so happens to be one of those things outside the revenue cap. So it really is extra money if if a TIF closes and there are monies left over, we get as you had mentioned, about 40% um, of those defeasance fees. And that goes on top, that's, that's in addition, so it's kind of like bonus money. We never get bonus money here in the district for you know, much of anything. We, um, you know, we have to go to referendum whenever we want to go above uh, that revenue cap. And, you know, uh, just to give you an example, um, other governmental entities, um, do not have to uh, go to referendum like when we want to add a building or add on to a building, do some capital project improvement, unless we have a bunch of money within our, <laughs> our, our regular budget. We have to go to referendum for that. So really new buildings are, we have to go to referendum for, but you know, the city doesn't and um, I don't even think WCTC needs to. Um, yeah. and. I don't know if the county does. I don't think they do. So, you know, one really big part of running this operation in our district is our buildings. And we have a lot of them and maintaining them and, and trying to structure them appropriately f to have them remain safe. So if this was a larger defeasance amount, um, I'd be saying, you know, Probably we wouldn't want to vote for it, but it's not that large of a defeasance amount. So, you know, I would maybe take a closer look at the the validity of the project, and that's just one person's opinion uh, on this committee. Um, but it's it's not a game changer for us either so and that is probably about twenty thousand dollars twenty five thousand yeah. yeah, right. difference and and you know we this the city is our partner right so there's give and take that we have with the city take for example parks and shared land uh, by our schools you know who mows the grass and who takes you know who takes care of it you know the city does that now they don't have to um, so there is give and take in that relationship too, and maybe this is just one of those where maybe maybe we should just say yeah, the, this is an okay amendment to make. Um, my opinion, Mr. McCaffrey. Did you ever ask them why they didn't come across from Wisconsin to the piece of property and grab those parcels that are? Mm -mm. Actually, paying taxes, but might want to do those rooming houses and redo them a little bit. No, oh, I didn't ask that question. That, That's the obvious. That might yeah. be a part of another district. Um, oh, you think that's another TIF in it? Because you know the down the, the new apartments. Yeah, on the other side Paul, of me. Yeah, that might be wrapped around into it. I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I don't know for sure. I, I don't you. know that for sure, but mm, maybe. And I'm sure there are parts of it that there aren't, you know, any. There might be islands still in the downtown right. area, but. Any other comments or th thoughts to share? We're, we're, we don't vote on this as a committee. We just give direction to, to Darren because, you know, there's always additional information that you receive directly at the meetings where you got to pretty much kind of make the decision live uh, with all the information that, that you get. Um, but it's our chance to share whatever thoughts we have with Darren on this. Yeah, Kelly? Just a comment, and I appreciate 
the engagement that Darren has had with the city on this. When we, when we first started talking about this, I also raised the question of such a, a small amount for this. Um, the amount of effort that is required by us as a board to discuss, by administration to engage, for us to participate in those meetings, it's a little bit frustrating, to be honest, that, um, you know, we financially, there's not a huge upside in this. Very rarely is there significant enough tiff that we're going to see something meaningful. Um, I think at the end of the day, we're here to make sure the kids in the district get the best possible education with, you know, the best possible financial strategy. And um, so, so this particular request is just a little bit of a non-issue for us. But I think, kind of to Mr. Como's point, that you know we're we're participating because we have a role to participate. Um, we might approach a different request differently. Um, it really just depends on what is the likelihood that what we're doing here is good for the community and good for the residents mm -hmm. and, and the constituents of the district. And um, so we've probably already put more time and effort into this one than we probably needed. Yeah, each, each situation, whether it's an amendment or a, n a new district opening up or one closing or there's merging of districts, there's all sorts of things that can be done that they we get a seat on the joint review board and that's just statute driven but I hear what you're saying each each situation is different and you know um, it'd be great if there was a huge defeasance number at the end of this one but there isn't so we had one where the defeasance was a much larger issue not too mm -hmm. many years ago so mm -hmm. it, it does occur but I think Kelly's right I think most of them end up being in this kind of range um, of conversation. Yeah. Any other guidance to provide, Mr. Clark? Do you have any questions, Darren, of us? Any other thoughts? Or, or Dr. Siebert, did you want to comment? Mm -mm. No. I think that helps. Okay. And I do go through this process because I do think, I mean, I am the representative. I'm the one who's casting the final vote. But just to make you knowledgeable about what's out there, too, because TIFs aren't a general backyard conversation with your neighbors, et cetera. So. Yeah, and there, this is policy driven. So our, the discussion of TIFs can happen at a, a number of different places, but they happen here. And we, we are to give guidance to whoever the representative is. And the representative can be a board member and has been board members in the past. And I've served in that capacity. Um, and can be again. Yes. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is that a hint, Darren? Especially maybe a new one. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> we'll move on to the next topic. How is our health insurance looking these days? <laughs> That's a topic you like, right, Darren? <laughs> no, I, I thought we'd come back um, and just kind of mapped out because obviously next to wages, health insurance is our, our biggest line item within the budget. So um, just thought I'd map out quickly what our plan is heading into 23-24. Uh, most of it's being driven by um, IRS mandates in terms of high deductible uh, health plan and health savings accounts and the threshold you need to meet in terms of deductible to be qualified for that. Um, so those are just rolling into um, the plan um, by caveat, I guess. Um, other than that, we aren't looking at a lot of changes. Um, we do offer a base wage plan, which is required under ACA. Um, very few people take it, but it is out there. And that is adjusted based on the federal poverty line automatically as well. So, um, you know, that's taken off of our hands. Uh, we are looking for an uh, increase in the, or looking to implement an increase in the premium copay um, for staff who don't participate in our health risk assessment process um, from 18 to 22 percent. Um, similar to last year, we're looking to utilize $800,000 of existing claim reserves, because our reserves are, are very healthy, oddly. They got better during a pandemic, but um, they did. But $400,000 of that is just, you authorized 750 for this year. We're only gonna use roughly half of that. So we're gonna use $400,000 that's rolling over and then add um, $400,000 um, onto that. And, and claims will drive whether 
Uh, we need those dollars um, or not. Again, this is a good, um, you know, our goal, budgetary goal was to have a zero increase in health insurance. This accomplishes that, um, but really I think it goes back to two years ago when the board uh, made the decision to implement the specialty drug program, which is the really high cost prescription drugs. Um, maybe it was three years ago now. Um, and the savings we've generated off of the specialty drug program is $1.8 million since its inception. Nice. Um, the board authorized um, us to um, move away from our previous employee health clinic uh, partnership um, and move to an arrangement with Pro Healthcare, um, which is saving us a half a million dollars annually. Um, the specialty drugs, a cumulative total. Um, so there's a distinction there. Um, so those two things are really are what's setting us up to provide some stability um, as we work our way through other issues like high CPI and, um, and government. And those savings came in higher than what we originally, I think, approved or what we projected. Yeah, right? we were. With the specialty drug, we knew it would be big, but we we weren't sure. You guys were being conservative. Yep. We always yeah. Which you should be. Yep. Uh, Try to lowball that. The clinic, we had a, you know, we were buying specific allotments of time, so it was much more of a measurable um, mm -hmm. thing. But I, I do think this is coming in probably $150,000 more than what we talked about in terms of um, potential savings. Um, the health clinic, I plan to have Pro Health uh, come in. We, we're working on some um, other ideas, I think are really good ideas. Um, if you remember, for those of you who are on the board, one of the things that we didn't offer with the new clinic that we offered at the old one was um, prescriptions. Mm -hmm. um, Pro Healthcare is now coming back with an option that we think is um, pretty neat. We'd be one of their um, pilot programs um, where essentially they have a vending machine outside of in the lobby of the clinic in you see a doctor, your prescription can be waiting, and you just wow. go up to your, um, there's a e-health where you kind of just fill out a summary of your symptoms, you send it in, they, they may not always give you a, a script or a diagnosis, but for yeah. strep throat yeah. and those types of things, for eliminating. They probably don't do controlled substances, right? No. So, it, yeah. It would be. Um, <laughs> that wouldn't be, be controlled, I guess, then. <laughs> it would be similar to what uh, Target used to offer for, and I don't know if they still do this or not, the $2, the moxicillins and those types, mm -hmm. of, uh, those types of scripts. So a lot of neat things with the Pro Health Clinic, so we'll be bringing that back. Um, the, the implementation of those, if they come to fruition, would be September 1. Um, but part of adding the scripts would need an amendment to our existing agreement with ProHealth. Because all we've done is bought care hours, essentially. Um, so I thought they'd do a nice round out report on, on how we're doing in general and then package that with a potential approval of an amended agreement. So that's all the things um, going on with the health plan. Yeah. Questions? Comments? All right. Thanks, Darren. Appreciate that report. Moving on to our ESSER update. Who's taking that one? Uh, it's pretty much the same information as last month, but we put it out there so people... So we're 100% allocated. Yes, we are 100% allocated. Um, this month we've added some graphs so you can see how much we have um, claimed to date and actually received from the, the ESSER funds that we've spent. Otherwise, not much has changed. Okay, any questions? Yes, Kelly. I think we may have some follow-up conversation planned on this, but um, I do know there have been some follow-up questions about how we report our intended plan to DPI. And I know in some cases we're waiting for POs on things, and so there there may not be a time limit to communicate that plan. But I'm just curious if there are any thoughts about that communication, or if that all is intending to come once we have actual invoices in hand between us and DPI. Mm -hmm. We don't have, we don't report like the encumbrance of ESSER funds. We we report out actual expenditures to DPI, right? Mm -hmm. We put into so. WISE grants what we plan on spending, a budget amount, mm -hmm. and then we go in and start claiming dollars against that. 
Yeah. So have we entered everything? We have not. We've entered everything for Esther three. Mm -hmm. um, Esther two has not. Does not have everything that's been entered. We're waiting on some total some quotes. Um, on the HVAC some of those work. purchases. I think that's the part that's ultimately missing. If someone goes and looks at mm -hmm. the uh, the report out from that, yeah. right. Um, um, also, there DPI gets behind. So we've submitted information. It's been out there for probably two or three weeks, but it hasn't been approved by DPA yet. So what the public sees is probably different than what's actually been submitted as yeah, well. Certainly, certainly a lag there. There is, a, yes. Well, in my understanding is there's some district's plans that it's taken six to nine months to actually get those approved. I'm not sure, you know, based on the size of them or if there's something mm -hmm. specific that they or have the complexity of it or, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the interesting thing with the approvals, I'm sure DPI is following the, the rules, but the language of ESSERs were was pretty broad, so yeah. you would think it would be a uh, fairly quick, but I'm sure the um, the volume I'm sure is extensive as, as yeah. well. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah, that that can be tough to communicate with people because you'll have someone ask a question like, "Well, you know, why haven't you spent y your ESSER funds?" It's like, well, as a board, we have voted to allocate these monies at 100%. We're, we're done as a board, essentially, unless we want to tweak it. But I mean, that would mean something would happen where we'd want to tweak it. But as far as we're concerned right now, as a board, we've decided how we're going to spend that. We needed, I think, a minimum of 20% to go towards learning recovery. We're at 37% mm -hmm. overall between all three ESSERs. You know? um, so it's just you know, I think we've done our due diligence. It's it's a hard story to explain to our constituents. Um, and it takes time to spend the money, too. It doesn't, you don't just drop that kind of money overnight. So um, we want to get bids. We want to, you know, we want to make sure that we get uh, fair value for our buck. So... Yeah, the, the best information for anyone in, in this community is our website. We've laid it out, it, the things we've allocated towards, the, the POs haven't been um, cut. Also, the HVAC work that we've used a, a significant amount of the money is very technical. You need plans, you need engineering, even to get to the RFP process. So it, it has, a, the projects, they have a long timeline. Um, but yeah, I would, I would refer anyone to um, our website um, to get the latest information that that takes into consideration all the statuses of the different projects, whether they're done or in the design phase, et cetera. Or, or, or they can reach out to um, me directly, whichever. Okay. Any other questions or comments on ESSER funds? All right, moving on to other business. Any recommendations for future topics for this committee to tackle? Okay. I'd like to uh, acknowledge Karen. This is your last FNF meeting. We've been on FNF for a long time. Yeah, mine too. Both of ours. But it's been a pleasure and a privilege serving with you in this capacity. And we haven't always ag agreed on things, but we've agreed to disagree respectfully. And um, I think that is an art form that should be replicated as much as possible, not only with this board, but in our community, our society these days. And you've always been respectful, and we've always had good debate. And I appreciate the years you put in. Thank you, Joel. And I appreciate your leadership here and for our full board as well. Thank you. Thank you. And you're going to be at South's graduation? I think I'll be at South graduation, so we'll see. <laughs> so I might see you there. Okay. Yeah. And you have a son graduating, so congratulations on that. Thank you. Fantastic. You know you both have to come back on Wednesday, right? Oh. Sorry, exactly, exactly. I was thinking the same thing. Like, I'll come to your house and pick you up if I have. As long as you don't embarrass us. Jess, didn't you post that, you know, we're going to be at a social event? and? <laughs> I heard there might be one on campus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had nothing to do with the planning. <laughs> All right. Um, 
seeing that uh, we're done with the open portion of our meeting for now, but we may have to come back to uh, reconvene into open session, depending upon how the closed session goes. But at this time, we do need a motion to go into closed session. Who would like to make that motion? Mr. McCaffrey. I move to adjourn to executive session pursuant to Wisconsin statute 19.85 parent one parent E for deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining re reasons require a closed session, pupil transportation, and food service contracts. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, and that's a roll call vote, Jess. Uh, Mrs. Robertson? Aye. Mr. Como? Aye. Ms. Kozlowski? Aye. Mr. McCaffrey? Aye. Dr. Piasek? Aye. <coughs> Passes 5 0. We'll roll right into closed session, and we don't know if we'll need an open session, so. Okay. We've reconvened into open session for the Finance and Facilities uh, Committee on April 10th. Um, we do have uh, one order of business uh, before us, and that is to look at the approval of a food service provider. Um, there was an administrative or uh, an advisory committee that uh, was pulled together uh, in an RFP process that we um, went through. And Darren, could you? Um, go through the highlights of the steps that um, the district has taken so far? Sure. Uh, about six months ago, an RFP was, um, actually two separate RFPs, was sent out to 18 providers. Um, and then they were all given the opportunity to attend a pre-bid walkthrough and visit to the district. Nine of them chose to attend that meeting. And then we ended up with two qualified um, responses to the RFP. Um, which we've been um, analyzing since the receipt. Um, part of that was presentations by um, both firms. Um, we also did a site visit for, because one of them was our existing um, provider. We also did a site visit to the other um, uh, bidder or respondent. Um, and then we had a committee of, of 10 people, which included parents, uh, two board members, a principal, um, and business office staff, and we do it through a grading process. And the matrix that was used was outlined in the RFP um, as well. So based on um, the scoring results, the parent committee um, recommended that we stay with Airmark um, with their premium level RFP response. That was then sent to DPI, which is mandatory. They signed off to make sure that we went through all the necessary um, steps. And now tonight we're asking the committee and then um, if you approve uh, the recommendation of the parent committee, the full board on Wednesday night to approve a contract which is potentially five years in nature, but the structure is a one-year contract um, with one-year add-ons <coughs> each year um, as, as the board sees fit. So um, that's a, a recap. Financially, uh, both proposals came in within a few thousand dollars uh, of each other, so there's really not a significant financial component in my mind um, in terms of one proposal being better than the other. So in every five years we are required to go to uh, put out a request for proposal. It was seven years for us because of the two two years of COVID. Two year add-on for that they allowed under yeah. COVID. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just we can I be open for motions? I motion to approve the uh, Food Service Committee's recommendation for food service provider for the next year as presented or voted. Is there a second to that? Second. Discussion?
All right. Seeing no questions or comments, um, Jess, will you please take the, or I'm sorry, this is not a roll call vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, passes 5-0, Jess. That does conclude our business for tonight. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us and following us, and hope you have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are adjourned.